Dane, are you there? I'm here. All right, um, let's go. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, yeah? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Glenn. What's happening? Um, well, it seems only me and, and Dana could uh, uh, do this call with you. Everybody else seems caught up. Hey, hey Glenn. Hi. How you doing? Well, <laughs> it was either doing this call or cutting another for the raft. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The raft slash stage, right? Yeah. Oh, um, I, I was trying to send you a fax the other day. Did it go through? or? It went through. I got it. And, uh, of course, it, it's phony. Not a real... Study or a real magazine. It's produced in India, type of thing. Yeah, it talks, it talks about something that does not exist. A unified theory of the universe is what people are looking for, mm-hmm. not writing about. No such thing yet. So Einstein's was phony too, right? Einstein thought he was getting a unified theory of the universe when he got the theory of relativity. Mm. But it was proven to be wrong since it doesn't explain the first instance. And therefore, all scientists are looking for Unified theory of the universe. Mm, okay. But it's not unnormal for the system to put out different stories to try to change people's opinions mm. and make themselves look like the uh, highest level. Right. Yeah, because if that was true, then there would be no uh, expansion and, and no uh, big crunch. And, and yeah. it, none of that would exist. It would just be... A, a and then you're left in their hands. <laughs> yeah. They seem to always do that. Uh, that's what I noticed when you were talking about the dances. Like I see that with like the sun dances and stuff like they. The men have taken the, the birth dance yeah. and turned it into an event for themselves as opposed to clan mothers. Yeah. While the clan mothers stand around looking in at men pretending to be women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was reading an, an old post of yours, Glenn, and... Um, Something that you said, I don't know, um, I haven't seen you mention it recently, but you said that, um, in this one sentence, you said, Central Asia will be totally destroyed, and following an asteroid strike, the foundation of the Earth will be shifted to a new magnetic foundation as the orbit of the Earth is reset. I said that? Yeah. (laughs) I don't remember saying anything like that. I wouldn't. Say it. I might write what somebody else was writing, mm-hmm. but it's certainly not something I would write in in a personal way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so this maybe is, this is, Google has been at the archives. Um, this is 2003, so Sunday. Yeah. I mean, this like so. I don't because. There's a 
big difference between what you wrote in the 2003 and what you were writing in, like, 2007. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe Google's been at it. <laughs> maybe. Because it certainly doesn't sound like me writing when I'm listening to it. <laughs> yeah. mm. Unless oh, well. you have uh, uh, some other information to clarify the context. Oh, um, it's part of uh, the 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 post is called um, Enoch's V I N times plan. Enoch's what? Enoch's V I. V I. I guess it's six. Six in Roman numerals. It, Is it Roman numerals? I have no idea what you're talking about, Enoch V.I. Yeah, um, Is it Enoch, the book of Enoch, book six, or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Enoch six, end times plan. That's what you title it. Cause, because everything kind of meshes in. <laughs> All your posts are like going in a one direct post. Taking it directly, it's like. Well, I w I know that I was reading the book of Enoch at the time, mm -hmm. so it may be some from there. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to ask you about, about that because you said it, um, the tablets might have the um, that unified theory on it, yeah. right? So. It, are they basically just having other people look at it, research it, so that it's for what for what reason exactly do you think? If they knew about it back then, whenever they they put the ta they made the tablets, they forged the tablets, is it? But they just couldn't get the people to get them. Like um, for sure, I, I'm not I'm trying to understand like why they're still looking well, for it now. Or, if you have. Uh, knowledge of this universe and you know that there are four dimensions and it started off with a singularity and the uh, red shift shows that things expand the further out they are you know that you're dealing with a shape charge mm question is what happens and the the two possibilities are that it keeps on expanding that's called an open universe or it transitions to a collapse and that's called a closed universe if you were pretending that you were the higher power you would want to know yeah and that's what science is all about mm -hmm. is trying to figure out the dance of the universe <laughs> yeah. yeah and and the reason you want to find out <laughs> is because if you knew what happened in the first instance, you might be able to reverse engineer. Mm, yeah. And, and change what creation set out. You reverse engineer as far as what? like Going back in time so you could exit where you entered. Are you talking about like something like uh, a stargate a leading into a fifth dimension Whoa. would bring you back into a space called matter. Oh, that's something that they couldn't like it's like a form of traveling but they wouldn't be able to go through just this matter because they don't understand what 
transition occurs there. Mm-hmm. Since, in fact, gravity does not exist in matter. Mm-hmm. How come mm-hmm. it exists here? And I think it's just raw energy. Like, it's not even like this, like a, a memory. Like, it's, it's just a memory. You can't. Dust. Say, huh? Dust. Yeah. You are the dust of the earth. Nothing congr- congeals together. Nothing happens there. But when you create a universe, you add gravity to cause an effect, everything that's within it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yeah. I think it's the concept, like, when you, you know, when you're using intuition, um, mm-hmm. you're going back in time in yourself, yeah. but you're not going back physically. It's just... You're going back in memory. Yeah. So I think that's how it would be, like, maybe for the universe, like, when it goes from the big bag to the the big cross that transition it's just a memory that's going back or forward what you are basically doing when a universe is being created is to create a uh, an experiment that has a beginning a middle and an end just like all life has a beginning a middle and an end And you learn (coughs) lessons in that journey that, if understood properly, can be used the next time you go through a similar experience. And like going from iron steel to stainless steel, to chrome, it's supposedly, every time you put it back into the fire, comes out stronger, better, shinier the next time around. So the context here is that creation set forth an experiment that within it would have people living many lives. And as they lived many lives, they, if they had access to the trials and errors they had in the past, they should, in fact, learn lessons from that and become wiser and wiser and wiser every time. However, since Creator took control and changes the formula manually in between by recombining the genome pieces of recipe and sends it back out again, the purpose is not to get wiser. The purpose is to be a better slave. Be a better accumulator on behalf of creator. So, so like, um, how we were just talking about how, you know, the transition. So, maybe we're looking at it uh, in a different way, like how Neanderthals they say they supposedly died. Maybe they were just transitioning to something else. Well, they what they did is change the normal course of events. Doesn't necessarily mean that they changed the activity that would have occurred. Right. What they did was change the time at which it would have occurred. And the minute you change the time of something, the fourth dimension, you are changing the end result. Right. It's right. like um, uh, 
uh, pool. If, uh, if you allow the balls to run their course, they end up where creation intended. If, however, you hit it in a way to careem off another ball, you end up changing the total game from then on. And yeah. we know that an angle with a very, very fine change in one place, as it expands over time, yeah. changes a big, big amount. Yeah. And therefore, right. where you were intending to go and where you end up going when you interfere with timing makes a big difference. Well, these, these guys, they don't understand time as far as in the big picture. They don't understand the the end product. It's what is called an unintended consequence. Yeah, they can't see the big picture as far as creation perspective. Yeah, because they, I think they think of themselves as creation. They really right. they, <laughs> they're trying to they're trying to get off the planet, so it doesn't matter what happens here. You know, they could speed it up all they want so they can get out of here and then whatever this place is left to the dust, you know. Yeah. They they would they would in turn go through the gate and into matter and and start making decisions from the point of view of being outside. That's not creation's intent. But mm -hmm. creation said that people who became wise, especially in the context of feelings and emotion, as opposed to the activity itself. Because creation doesn't need any lessons in activity. It knows activity. But what you don't have in matter is any link to feelings, to conscience, to emotion, any more than a computer has that. Mm -hmm. right. uh, now, when they were, before they became the computer, um, do you think they had that? Because it seems like they gave that up. They were just um, really um, serious <laughs> scientists. Well, it's, it's a little bit like creator today acting on something it doesn't understand. If you consider that this is not the first universe, that many universes have been made before this one to arrive at this point. And the reason more universes are made is because creation sees that it's not quite right and therefore takes another stab at it. And in order to get it quite right, needs to have the missing pieces. So where creator is at, is trying to figure out gravity, which creation has figured out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But where creation is at is trying to figure out feeling, conscience, emotion, mm -hmm. all of those more uh, difficult to explain things. I think creation should understand that already. Cause that's like another form of uh, information. Feelings. Well, when you're not living it, mm. it's it's a lot more complicated to understand. Mm. And and the way you get to understand it is you go out and you live it, mm. and you take the ones who did it best, and you bring them back and add them to yourself, to your spine, 
so that as part of the recipe you have for the next time, you will then, have mm-hmm. the best memories of what those things were. Then you have, you know, you call them actors who can just kind of bring these feelings on command. And <laughs> now, would you say that? Would you say that um, since they piggyback on everyone's spine, are they able to kind of hijack that experience as well for themselves? Well, they did because they've changed the medulla. Right. The medulla used to be a determination by the individual called conscience. It used to be, is this right or wrong? Is this good or evil? And they've changed that to, is this safe or mm-hmm. not safe? But isn't that for females more? Because I've been really analyzing this, Glenn, like how women and men look at problems and things like that, day-to-day things. They're fundamentally different. Well, they are different because the change was induced in women before it was induced in men. And it's not really there yet in men. It's there almost totally in women. Mm -hmm. Safe is always the question. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> I see that as a woman, definitely. And mm. and that's a minority in men. Uh, yeah. Maybe a large minority, but it's still uh, not a complete package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these men in America today. Um. So these these people, this type of I guess medulla was all formed in Japan, right? Was reformed in Japan. Reformed. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, I, recently, Glenn, I've been um, reading the, the Persian the, the Persian tales, um, 1001 Nights, Arabian Nights. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really given me insight, man, like, because it's, you know, all those little, little things like like bird, like uh, duh, weasels, sparrows, chickens, ducks, they use them in these in these um in these stories. And they use them mm-hmm. in a certain type of context. And I know what you mean when you talked about the hedgehog, because there's a story called the hedgehog and the mm-hmm. pigeons, and there's another one called the duck. Mm-hmm. It's with a duck, and the duck dies at the end. And they all, they all, like, it's all, you know, part of this uh, premise, you know, they talk about Neanderthal, but in, um, in another way, you know, they talk about, uh, you know, his end product or what happened to him, and, but they veil it in the morality thing, like you say, you know, system of morality. Yeah, system of morality is not to them a system of conscience. Oh no, it's just a, <laughs> it's just a way of veiling things, morality. Mor- Roma is mm-hmm. why. That's their morality. Yeah. Roma is why. There is no L, so take it out. The first yeah. letters are Mora, which is Roma, or Amor. Mm-hmm. Roma is why it's two in one that's the goal that's the project that they're working on mm-hmm. but in the end they 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 decided okay if if human beings were two in one at the beginning mm-hmm. and we're going to return it to that is that what we want? The question is hardly an answer to what we want. We want a new and improved hermaphrodite. We know the male can be strong and durable and and uh, be quick at thought on the spot. 
that we would like. But we won't, wouldn't want the male to be doing anything for himself. We want him to be doing it for the system. So we have to modify in that. So that modification basically starts the ball rolling and says, okay, if we're going to modify, what do we need to modify? Are there any advantages to female? Yes, there are advantages to be female because the female body seems to disarm people's objections. And instead of objecting to things, they concentrate on the female. So that's a good thing. So let's start by saying, okay, we're going to have a male package with a veneer or porcelain cover female. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, then we start modifying internally. First thing we have to do is say, okay, we need to modify the reasoning So that instead of doing things for itself, it wants to do it for us. In order to do that, we have to block out portions of the trials and errors of the past by preventing the new hermaphrodite from constantly going back and looking at the search that was done originally on any topic and modify that information so that it's either not available or wrong in its conclusion. That we'll do by having the medulla on 24-7 realignment. We'll send the answers that it goes looking for instead of getting the answer from the spine. How do we do that? Well, we limit the spine's ability to talk by creating male pattern baldness. Yeah. We do the same thing with women by making sure they're wearing veils or hats or whatever. Short hairstyles. And, and in the Middle East, we do it to men as well by wearing turbans on their heads, wrapping stuff around their hair. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing we have to figure out is how do we get that information to the medulla's 24-7 receptors? We therefore have to create an antenna that, that, in fact, can receive data from a vehicle parked nearby. That's how? <laughs> so they create, uh, I don't know if you've seen the latest meters that uh, the hydro companies are using. The old ones were mechanical, and they used to send readers by to read the number, and, and then you get the right. and an estimate in between the visit. Well, right. now you have a meter that's electronic. Yeah. It's got three lights on it. Mm -hmm. It's got a green light, a amber light, and a red light. Those lights are linked to a local computer in one of the hydro boxes nearby, they've put in a, a device that polls each meter over a four-day period. If the communications are clear between the meter in your house and their polling device, the light is green on your meter. 
if it's wavering back and forth, the light is amber, and if there's a blockage, it's red. Now, the blockage could be temporary. It could be that a truck is standing in the middle someplace and barring the signal. It could be that leaves growing on branches in the summertime block the signal or snow on branches. But over a four-day period, it keeps on trying until it gets it. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't get it in the four-day period, you get an estimate on your bill. My suggestion is also that they can, if they want, create a power failure which sends it right, a, right away to red, and then bring the power back, but the meter doesn't quite go from red to green. It kind of hovers in the yellow or amber for a while, and I suggest at that point they could change the count mm -hmm. and have it run faster so that when it comes back on, you owe them much more money than you did when it went off. That's their way of stealing from individuals who use the meter. So think of it in the same way that your medulla is receiving information from a vehicle nearby. That vehicle nearby may be uh, a remote control device on your TV set. It may be telephone line. It may be power line that have devices on them that change your mood, change your attitude on different topics every time you're talking talking about something in particular that it doesn't like, it can send little signals to your nervous system or to your endocrine glands to cause a change in your body. So that whole system, you're, you're talking about a medulla that has been modified to have a different program. You're Do you think they have something like that externally device. already? And you're talking about a a, um, a central command place. That's three things in one to add to the male-female, and that brings that package up to five. Um, Glenn, do you think they have things like that already? Like absolutely. Like um. And, Absolutely, uh, and and where they have it now is in professional marketing, right? Uh, sports figures uh, demonstrate on a regular basis that one game they play marvelously, another game they play badly. Yeah, do you There's remember? no difference in the training. There's no difference in the knowledge. It's only on its short-term reaction time mm -hmm. yeah. that when a goalie turns to stop a puck, if his mind is diverted for a split second, or a tennis player lifts his racket to hit a ball, and all of a sudden something tells him to turn his head a fraction and hits the ball a quarter of an inch off of where he would have normally. All those things are happening every day. And yep. a, a policeman who has had many lives has learned what the lessons are being taught. Listen to your commanding officer. Do what he says. Don't do what's right or wrong. Do what your commanding officer says and you'll get a raise at the end of the year. 
and the commander is telling you to falsify records. And you falsify records, and that leads to court cases, which leads to insurance costs going up and more money to the system, and from that you'll get a raise. That kind of stuff is going uh, on now. Um, um, I don't know if Dana remembers, but I remember an article. I don't know how true it was, but they talked about the technology that they had. They called it, like, voice-to-skull technology. Voice-to-skull. Yeah, it was like they could project things in your head. Yeah. And well, I'm a lot of people, uh, they'll say, I hear voices. Yeah, I'm forgetting. I, you... I hear a whistling sound or yeah. a buzzing sound. Yeah. It's not accidental. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear that high-pitched squeal in my ear sometimes, like, a steady high pitched noise, you know. Yeah, I've heard that, but I, I I thought it was just from having headphones in my ear. Yeah, afterwards, but if you don't have headphones, like I'll just be laying in my bed and I just hear like this constant like Yeah, I've had that. <laughs> yeah. Well they have all those cell towers that are up now, like everywhere. I'm sure they can they don't just work for cell phones, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh but yeah. They have wires oh, yeah. all over your house, they have connection devices. What do you know about what's inside you know? exactly so but now they're they're moving beyond these basic five parts and they're starting to add the other parts if you consider the medulla is the top side of a telephone headset or or a system where you get information you're missing the bottom part where they get information in your body. So that work has been done by creating breast cancer, and then rebuilding the breast and putting in a mechanical mm -hmm. device inside the uh, back that women will receive to rebuild the breast. That means that not only can the woman report back what she heard, but she could send it word for word when it's happening. And, and you know, when are the breasts exposed, it gives you the most intimate of details mm. is when couple is lying in bed, they used to have a cigarette, <laughs> <laughs> talk over things while they were in bed, you know, the most intimate questions were being answered, right. so that information is now being picked up, and, and changing that like they did with the medulla from a mechanical to a, a natural uh, structure took time and that's why they had to have breast cancer cut off breast do a lot of testing and then eventually uh -huh. when they got it to work in in uh, diseased breast then the Rockefeller gang at the Sloan Kettering Institute yeah. started saying cut your breast off so you won't get cancer now they have the testing done on on breasts that are perfectly healthy. And that's been going on in history since the history of the Amazon being in North Africa and being sent to Brazil. Mm. So you're not stealing something from yesterday. It's interesting how when they get that, that chemotherapy treatment, they go bald as well, too, right? Yeah. It's all uh, unintended consequences for you, but certainly intended on their side. Yeah. Then yeah. The, the next thing they need is a gill. And the most appropriate place to put a gill would be uh, if women are going to wear bikinis at the spot in which the 
the two cups come together in the cleavage mm. on a bra uh, is the best place for a gill. It's right a, a above the lungs, and it could be fitted, and I'm sure that that investigation is going on right now in Montreal, and the testing place is the St. Lawrence Seaway, and mm. the university that's doing it is called McGill. <laughs> Wow. So you have uh, uh, male, female, medulla, telephone system, both ends, mm -hmm. uh, a, a pod that retrieves the information or passes on the information, uh, a gill, all of that adds up to eight pieces of this new structure. Now, I'm sure there's a nine. Uh, Glenn, you were talking about... Um, I won't hazard a guess. I'll let you guys come up with it. <laughs> Earlier you were talking about, like, uh, say Trace is trying to figure out the feelings and, I guess, the makeup conscience. I, and I look at the word conscience um, spelled um, two different ways. It's spelled you know, S C I O U S, as in like scion or something like that. And it's spelled conscience. Yeah. And conscience. And at the end is a dance. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's it's theater. Mm -hmm. And they say wow. science, when you look at the word science, comes from the French seer, or S-C-I-R, to know, and seer. Well, think, <laughs> think about this person mm -hmm. would have no need for a uterus in the vagina, and... What you would have a need for is a new way of giving birth. So link it to the belly button, a place in which you put in the egg, and then link it to a pouch where at an early stage the baby pops into an outside pouch that can access the one breast that is still functioning and you're not giving birth to twins or quadruplets or whatever one child one egg one child one breast does the work so within the structure mm. of the belly button you have to have a structure that allows an egg to be in inserted and a baby's place to pop out, which is equivalent to the bottom of a bikini mm -hmm. or a one-piece bathing suit that would cover up the child's motion between where it spends its time and when it goes up to eat. So marsupial. Marsupial Mars soup. Mm -hmm. And since everything started in Antarctica and moved north for testing, uh, the marsupials most known are kangaroos. Right. They're in Australia, Northern Hemisphere, the equivalent is Austria, mm -hmm. A-U, Odd-Humia, the nurturers. Mm -hmm. So you can expect that since the symbol of uh, 
Australia is a marsupial, and its uh, device is a boomerang, and they send the system out into the world to be perfected. When it comes back, as a boomerang is known to do, it will have been modified completely. Perfect slave will arrive back at the continent from where it began its journey. Its journey is basically shown by the journey of the orange into India, into China, reverse the direction, go back into Egypt, Middle East, Uri, Mitanni, Greece. I don't think, um, Glenn, I think, um, like how they do, they show that journey of the orange, but I've seen they've, they've done that with other things too, like silk. They seem to be trying to uh, convey some type of message by. Well, silk is the basic clothing and the basic track. Everything has to have two sides. Arm, assist. <laughs> yeah. right. Everything. You can't get anything perfect. Everything is designed to assist and then harm, or harm and then assist. Whether it's creating disease, war, pestilence, famine, Education. Education, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Arm assist. Oh. oh, were you ever to, able to get that uh, your CD player working? Jared told me he had some issues with the, the CD tray I, or something. I got a disc stuck in it, and I'm waiting. There's a guy involved with the cell who says he can fix it. Do you have a pinhole next to it? Some, some of them, some of them have. The door, um, is, the door the is now jammed. broken on the front, so what I'm seeing is the mechanism side. Uh, okay. Some of them they would have like the little Try pin next to it. Screwdriver in and pry it, but it won't come. Oh no no no! Usually they have a little hole, and you could stick a paper clip in there, and that'll release it. I don't know if that one does or not, but... If it did, it doesn't now. <laughs> <laughs> does your computer still work, the one that Tom and I were on when I was over there? No. You had in the living? No? No. <sighs> the screen will not come on. Huh. I cannot... I can turn it on, and everything seems to be coming along. But the screen, although it has all the lights on it, that there's power there. Right. There's no image that comes on the screen. I'm sure that's a virus. Um. Yeah, that happened to me. Yeah. Um. What's the limit of like things you can mail? Like, they won't let you mail computer parts and stuff like that. Or the uh, the mail is used to help out the system. Uh, we had a situation where uh, CIPI didn't have enough funds to cover what we knew would be the insurance payment on the vehicle in one month. So Denny wrote out a check to CIPI and mailed it to the Bank of Montreal directly so that it wouldn't lose time coming through me. It disappeared during its journey, and when it was tracked down by the cell, it was being held in customs in the U.S. It was held for, I think, 19 days. Wow. <laughs> and the intent was to try and hold it long enough that it would miss the pay date. Right. 
But luckily enough, there was a donation to the Institute in cash that I was able to put in and cover the amount. And her check came in the next day after the, the due date. So wow. I had that second amount of money to put in the bank, the insurance would have bounced. They would have withdrawn the insurance on the vehicle, so we would have been without transportation. Now, I, I've i seen it on eight different things since she's been there. She I think it's her name. <laughs> yeah, like she it's... needed to apply for the right to operate as a registered nurse in New York. Do that. Right. She had to get California to send her records. Yeah. So she sent, she sent the check to California, and they sent her the check back uh, because they said she had an old debt that she has absolutely no memory for, and not even to that school but to another school which she never attended. So it was all manufactured by the nurses association type of thing in California. So she then sent a check to pay her non-existing debt to the other school and it didn't get delivered for about a month. Wow. Although it went by registered mail with tracking signature required, she ended up figuring out a way to make the payment online. As soon as it was made, the check arrived. Mail. <laughs> I have um, um, uh, an example going on right now which has happened a number of times. I have to send her a document to sign for right to come to Canada. It disappears. Where it disappears is on Canada Post tracking, it says, item forwarded to receiving country. And on the U.S. Post Office, it says, we have been advised that an item will be sent from Canada to U.S. Neither of them admitting they have it. So in theory, the item is someplace at the buoy that marks the middle of the St. Lawrence Seaway, not in Canada, not in the U.S., <laughs> and it spends days there. In limbo, huh? Limbo. So there, and this has happened uh, to all mail in which we register. I have sent the same envelope the same day by putting the same material in two envelopes. <laughs> the one that was registered takes 12 to 15 days sometimes. The one that is just put a stamp on it, it's there in five days. Mm. So the post office is in on it. Of course, with their scanners, all they have to do is put uh, uh, the uh, postal code, and as the envelope is coming down, it can swerve it off the line. Uh, on right. one obsession, the woman in Ogdensburg, uh, after she had been shown the number of times that they uh, charging uh, for fast delivery and registered mail did not accomplish the task, when I go to the post office now, I ask them, how much is for storage? <laughs> how much of the mail cost is for storage? Because they seem to want to keep it more than send it. 
How about the, those these types of services where you can pay a little more and yeah, you can get the mail what, there the next day? That's, that's a register. what we're doing. Tracking it even, and it disappears. Well, then you should get your money back. Then if you, if it's not going the next day, then you should. That's well. not the point. Mm-hmm. We need to send stuff. The point is, why are they stopping it? Yeah, you, uh, I mean, when, when the woman was told and shown on paper, mm. uh, she said, "Well, on this one, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do." And she took the stamp out with the date and stamped 15 times on the envelope, both sides. <laughs> and then she put a piece of tape at the top, piece like paper tape we use in a butcher store, mm-hmm. but the difference is it only had glue on the bottom part about a quarter of an inch. Right. The rest of it had no glue. So that it went off and it took 15 days because obviously if it's going through the scanning machines and there's a piece of the tape sticking out, it's going to get caught in something. So they, in fact, did it. So Jenny went in on a Saturday morning, and there was a different guy there. And she said, I have a piece of paper I got off the net that says, you have this envelope here, and I want it. The guy went out, and he pulled out his tracking device instead of getting what we see at home when we're tracking they have an internal one Mm -hmm. and it told them where the envelope was in his post office he came out with the envelope and the sheet from his tracker and he said you see it says on here where it was but on Yours, it doesn't say that. And she looked at it, and written in in, uh, color at the bottom was a line that says, under no circumstances must this information, can this information be released to people who are not employees of the world. So they have a two-book system. One to tell you or not tell you, and the other one to know the truth. Where is the package? Who's holding it? And they can make it uh, divert. If if she's sending something to me, Ogdensburg from here is 35 miles as the crow flies. Then they got to... They send it to Watertown. Watertown sends it to Plattsburgh. Plat, uh, not Plattsburgh. What's what's the name of that other town? Uh, well, a, a second town in that same area. They send it to New York City. New York yes. sends Customs. Customs sends it to the post office in Montreal. Montreal sends it to the Customs in Montreal, Montreal Customs then send it out. Before you get through the thing, there are two weekends where they do nothing. Often on the first day, uh, Syracuse was the other town in New York. Often on the first day, it doesn't even leave the post office for 48 hours on its journey. So when you add it all up, a thing that should take a day. You just walked across the bridge and walked over here. <laughs> will take 20 days. But not for everybody. Just for her and me. Glenn, you got a secret society of um, postal service people. They got It's like an order. <laughs> yeah. I think they have an order over everything that has that record. Right control of your life like, uh, some secret some brotherhood some yeah. and these are documents you can um, email or 
or print out on your end or anything like that? No, I, I can't copy a document onto the computer. Uh, Neither. So you need a, a good fax? She, or, she sends me a fax. Mm -hmm. She gets it there, a different story than the Canadian post office for the same piece. And she sends me the fax, and then I go into the post office, and I say, here, my computer says no results. In the U.S., they're telling my wife this. What's going on? Oh, because either, either way, she'd still have to, to sign it and mail it back to you, right? Yeah. Because it has to have her signature on it. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And no, but you, you can't have a copy of a signature, like... You can have a copy, but it'll arrive about a month later. Uh, we gotta get blend a computer, man. <laughs> yeah. We gotta get you a nice scanner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Anyways, it's getting on four o'clock. I'm behind right. feeding the animals. Well, yeah. I'm gonna have to let you guys go. Okay, Glenn. All right. Sir. All right. Talk to Stay, you warm. Right. Stay warm. Stay okay. warm. All, All right. right. For now. All right, bye, bye Glenn. Hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It's like a whole other level, right? <laughs> yeah, man. It's just it's just that feel fight shit, man. It just fucking like <laughs> the things that you you know. I guess a lot of people take for granted all day to day things like they just make it really hard. They they. They've come a, a long way from that. Uh, I don't know if you, ever, if you remember that movie Pony Express with uh, Costner, and they're got to deliver the mail in the in the old west, and it's like, you know. Oh, when they go, <laughs> yeah. You come a long way from that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, you at least had like uh, one of those, you know, those all-in-one printer, fax, scanner, copier. Mm -hmm. You could at least get some of that stuff and just sent over, or at least like a decent, not even a, a brand new computer, but just something that's like, maybe I'll give them my old laptop when I get another one. Just It still works. You could still use it a lot faster. And Some of that stuff could just be like, she could sign it and email it to him. It's signed. She could scan it from her house, and then he could just print out the scan thing and drop it off instead of, you know, because that's a pain in the ass. And, Oh man, that's let's go. I guess um. Hi. Right. Hmm? That's why I like uh, I like she has like a a thing over her head like she can't mail anything. That lady man like and like yeah. Cause it wasn't as bad for Glenn before. Like he would mail me shit and I would get it. I remember when he mailed me that the newspapers, I got it. You know, a pretty decent yeah. amount of time. But I think um, that because now they're together, and um, that relationship they have, they don't like that. I guess too much. They don't want well. They don't want them together. Yeah. Yeah. It all prolongs the time that. This it's is like crazy. an allegory of like some fucking <laughs> Disney story. We don't want them together. <laughs> Even you know. Right. Exactly. <laughs>